Good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, too much stereotype. So, what have I got for you lovely lot today? Well, it occurred to me the other day when I was looking at my YouTube analytics that nearly 466,000 views have come from you lovely lot down under. So I thought we'd start a new series called Around the World in Watercolour. And we're going to be having a go at painting this lovely, I think it's a billabong or an oxbow lake when I was at school. So anyway, come and join me and we'll paint this lovely scene step by step together. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some ash, it's 100% cotton, rough texture, it's on a block so it won't need stretching, but <laughs> any decent watercolour paper will do. My colours today are cobalt blue, yellow ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson and some Aussie red gold. And four brushes from my range, a three quarter inch flat, a number 12 and number 6 round, and of course my trusty number 3 rigger. There's no photo reference today because this is just something I made up from various references. A quick and simple sketch, no drawing template needed for this one. Off we go and I'm completely saturating the whole page with a large Harke brush. So let that just soak in for a second, then I'm using my flat brush and just dabbing in some cobalt blue into the sky. And for the water reflection, just doing the same. Right, because I'm working very quickly while the paper's still wet, it might be a good idea to have all your colours pre-mixed and ready to go. So all my greens today have been from a mixture of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue, but I am dropping in some burnt sienna into the wet wash to warm up some of the greens. Now I know I say this a lot, but let all these colours mix and blend on the paper. Keep moving quickly because this all needs to go in while the paper is still wet. Just simple blobby shapes, not trying too hard to make them look like trees. And here with my flat brush just lifting out that little bit of colour to create the water's edge. And then just trying to match all the colours and values to what I've painted above. And I'm continuing to use my flat brush, it just helps me to get all the colour in quickly. And it's really important that you line up all these values to help to create that illusion of a reflection. And this is definitely one advantage of using cotton paper like this arch. It just stays wet that little bit longer than the pulp base papers. Now I know some artists will wet their paper on both sides, which is a good way of keeping your paper wet for that little bit longer. It obviously means that you won't be able to tape your paper down because you have to wet it first. So there's pros and cons of using both methods. And here with a damp brush I'm just lifting out the light areas in the reflection to match those tree trunks. I'm even using a piece of tissue here. And just continuing to build up the reflection and keeping those brush strokes vertical. So 
so now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and as i'm still doing a dry january it's just a nice strong cup of coffee so next i'm painting the ground here and i'm using a 50 50 mix of the aussie red gold and alizarin crimson and it's to achieve that lovely red dirt color that you see all across the australian outback I'm just dropping along the bottom edge into the wet some burnt umber. Okay, so next for some details in the trees and I'm using my normal mix of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue and I'm using the dry brush technique, keeping a brush nice and flat to the paper and picking up the texture. but also painting in some conventional brush strokes here and there. So did I tell you the other day I saw um, this Australian native busking? Oh no. He was playing Dancing Queen on a didgeridoo. And I thought that's Aboriginal. Boom. Boom. And this is just some rough texture I'm putting in the bank here. And this is a very bluey green to suggest something in the distance. And when that's dry, a quick sweep with some burnt umber to suggest some texture and shadow in the ground. Now for this big tree here and I'm starting by wetting all the trunks with clean water using my number 12 round. And then painting in mainly on the left hand side some yellow ochre. Then into the wet a little touch of burnt sienna. Then switching to my smaller number six right along that left hand edge with a thick consistency of burnt umber. Then to get that much darker brown, I've just added in some cobalt blue into the burnt umber. Always try and paint these trees in one quick stroke if you can.
So now it's time for the wonderful trusty number three rigger, the perfect brush for all these little spindly branches. and using my number six brush, a little more dry brush detail here. And I'm just putting a little more warmth into the trunk here with a very watery burnt sienna, leaving the right hand side unpainted. So now I've finished everything above the water line, I know exactly what I need to reflect into the water below. So I'm re-wetting everything with my large Harke brush. And exactly as I did with the first layer of washes, I'm matching the colour and values as close as possible to the above. Right, for those of you who aren't either Brits or Australian, let me tell you a little bit about the rivalry between the Poms and the Aussies. Now, we love each other really, but when it comes to sport, ho, 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 especially cricket and rugby. Now, in cricket, every two years, a five match series is played between the two countries known as the Ashes. And it's named after this tiny urn, which contains the ashes of a cricket bale. Now, this came about when the Aussies beat England for the first time on home soil in 1882, and it was to signify, mockingly, the death of English cricket. Anyway, they've been battling for this tiny trophy ever since. Of course, the real one is locked away in a display cabinet at Lord's Cricket Ground, but we begrudgingly let the Aussies have a replica they frequently take back with them to Australia. So if you do find that your paint is drying a little bit too quickly, give it a quick spray. And here I'm just tilting my board to an angle of about 45 degrees to let the paint run down a little. So I've lost that little bit of light there, so I'm just lifting out with a damp brush. So the paper's still damp enough so I can continue building up the reflections in the water. It's those soft edges that I'm looking for.
When that's totally dry, I'm taking a creamy colored pastel pencil and painting in all the lighter values in these tree trunks. But of course you could use some gouache or acrylic if you don't have any pastel pencils. And I like to use my finger too to blend in and smudge some of the pastel. And again, I'm matching what I've done above into the reflection. So here I just want to bring out the contrast a little on the right hand side of these trunks. So I'm just painting in with my brush a dark green value. And back to the pastel pencil again. You know, you'll never get a total mirror image of what you've got above, but you know, roughly will do. A few little highlights with the same colour on the dirt bank here. And then finally scratching out some glistening highlights with this craft knife. That's not a knife. That's a knife. And then I'm just lifting out with a wet brush and a piece of tissue some subtle ripples in the water. Now it's important you don't do too many of these because you don't want to distract from the reflection in the water. And then I'm going to finish off with a minimal amount of ripples here on the water using a darkish green. There we go. All done and this one in just under two hours. Right, last minute edition, let's just put in three little birdies. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Just let those watercolour paints flow and enjoy yourself. And let me know in the comments below where else in the world you'd like to take a trip in our watercolour adventure. And as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free. Leave a comment. I do read every single one. Can't always reply to them all. 
And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Cheers now, everyone.